Hello everyone, welcome to this episode of the Connect series. Today we have a very important topic, power consumption for connectivity devices. James Murdoch is joining us. He is an engineer on our connectivity team and he's gonna walk us through this topic. Thanks for joining us, James. Thank you for having me, Nick. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So this is a really interesting topic to me because I always hear about power consumption and there's different modes and words, standby, shutdown, active, and, and, and I've always been interested in, in what those modes are and, and why they're important to connectivity devices. Can you walk us through that? Yes, and it's a really good question because it's super important for battery life, which right. is what everyone cares about, yeah. especially for embedded processing. So let's just draw a picture to kind of show what we mean. So obviously we usually have a, in our system a battery and a chip, okay? And when we're talking about current consumption or, or battery life, really we're talking about current going from the battery to the chip. So let's draw a picture to help us understand all those different modes you were asking about. So we're gonna draw a picture of current I versus time T, okay? And we're gonna start out really close to zero and then you'll see how it all progresses. So on this diagram, which is not to scale, of course, so please forgive my, my artistic skills. <laughs> We've got all the different modes you were asking about, including shutdown here, and then standby here, and then active mode here and here. And so essentially what this represents is as time is passing, this is the different levels of currents that are being drawn from the battery by the connectivity device. And to your point earlier, the reason it's important is because that affects the battery life you're getting out of the, the object, whether it's a, you know, an electric toothbrush or, or even your cell phone or something like that. Is that the right way to think about it? Exactly, okay. exactly correct. So can you then walk us through each of these modes and, and kind of what they mean? Sure, sure. Let's go from left to right from my perspective in shutdown. So let's say you have an application that's being shipped a long way on an ocean liner or something. But when it gets to its final destination, you want to be able to wake it up with a button press, not with anything like a paper between the battery and the chip. In order for that to work, of course, you want very low current consumption. But the first time you wake up, you usually don't care if the turn on time is a little bit longer, just that first time. So that's what shutdown is for. It allows you to wake up the device after a long period of sleep uh, with very little current consumption in between during that sleep period. Now the trade-off for that is obviously the first time you wake up uh, going from shutdown into active, you're gonna take a little bit longer to get going. So the first time you go from shutdown into active, the chip is gonna take a little longer to wake up in the morning. You know, it's, it's basically the first time you wake up in the morning. Now the second time, you go into an active mode from standby, you won't need nearly as long. Why is that? Well, it's because in shutdown, we, the chip has no idea what it was doing before, what it needs to do. That's why the first time it wakes up, it needs a little longer to, go, to get going. But after the first shutdown, after you've taken that application off the ship and you're using it, you want to have very low current consumption still, but you want to have very quick turn on and you don't want to have waste a lot of current. So what we do is we go into standby mode and in standby, the internal states of the chip are being maintained. And that means the next time you go into active mode, you don't need to wait very long to get going. So if you compare this line to this line, you can see it's a lot smaller uh, in the X dimension. So to break it down in shutdown mode, really no functionality. You're waiting for a button press to wake up mm -hmm. in active mode full force. You're doing what a connectivity chip does, transmitting, receiving, and standby mode is uh, limited functionality, but you do retain memory and, and configuration of the device. So the next time you wake up into active mode is much quicker. Exactly. Is that correct? Perfect. Perfect explanation. So yeah, if I break it down to almost like myself and to your point earlier in shutdown mode, that's where I'm sleeping for the night, sleeping all night. I wake up for the first time in the day, it takes me a while to get going, but then I'm full on, I'm in active mode. Middle of the day, I don't have much going on. I nap, mm -hmm. then I get up, but it takes much shorter time to get back into that active mode. Exactly, perfect explanation. Got it. And so it seems like when you look at battery life, what it what it boils down to is a trade-off of 
all of these modes and how long you spend in them. So how could I figure out, are there any resources from Texas Instruments to help figure out, you know, if I want to build an application, how do I evaluate my total power consumption and battery life? Very good question. We have two excellent resources available. The first is a power calculator that we have on our website. It's an Excel sheet that you can use to enter a bunch of parameters and get an idea of your battery life. For more advanced users, we also have something called Energy Trace, which is integrated with our Code Composer Studio environment. And with Energy Trace, you can actually see this plot for your application. And then you can optimize your application to get the lowest current consumption and longest battery life possible. Got it. And you can actually put numbers behind this. Exactly. And speaking of, just for scale, can you give us a rough idea of numbers between the different modes? Uh, very good question. So shutdown is going to be in the hundreds of nanoamps, like 100 to 200 nanoamps. Standby is going to be around 10x shutdown, so around a microamp. Okay. And then active modes is going to be around 1000x of standby, so in the milliamps. Wow. Okay. So it is very important how much time you spend in the modes. Correct. Okay. Well, thank you very much, James. Th this is very helpful. Um, it's, it's a very clear way to break down the different power modes and why they're important to a connectivity device. And thank you everyone for joining. Uh, as always, you can go to ti.com slash wireless to learn more information or the specific power related tools that we mentioned will be linked below. Don't forget, tune in next time. We've got another great topic. Thank you.